Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. In this video, we're going to be talking about the anatomy of waves. Waves are something that you are almost certainly familiar with. I suspect that there is probably almost nobody alive, unless they are very small, who doesn't know what a wave is. If you've ever been to a lake or the ocean or anywhere really where there's water, you've seen waves. Or if you've ever looked across a field and you see the breeze as it goes through the field across the uh, plants, you've seen a wave. So what are waves? Okay, you're familiar with them. You know what they are, but can you tell me really what they are? Can you tell me what's causing a wave or what's happening? What's the phenomena that's occurring when you see a wave? I mean, why do they do what they do? Why are they all wavy anyway? So a wave is movement, well, okay, duh, but it's movement of what? It's not movement of matter, although matter does move, but it's more importantly, it's the movement of energy. So when you see a wave, the thing that is moving, the medium, the substance, medium is a fancy sciencey word that means substance, the substance that the energy is moving through, the substance that is going up and down, okay, what is moving through it is energy. Yes, the substance itself will go up and down, up and down, but it doesn't move forward. It's only the energy that moves forward. That's important to understand. When you look at a wave, a ripple, if I take a little pebble, and I drop it into a pond. I'm going to see these ripples that are going to spread. And it's going to look like they're spreading outward. And they are. The waves are spreading outward. They start from a middle point and they slowly spread away from that middle point, getting further and further away. But what is it that's moving away from the middle point where I drop the pebble? It's not the water. The water, all it does is it goes up and down. But it stays right where it was. What moves away from the center point is the energy. The same goes for any kind of wave, whether that's light waves or sound waves or radio waves or any kind of wave, earthquakes, waves, uh, earthquake or waves in the ground, in the earth. The What's moving is not, the ground doesn't move outward. Okay, you can understand that. You can imagine that. The ground in an earthquake goes up and down, up and down. It doesn't move away from where it was, at least not uh, very much. But it's the energy that's moving through the substance, the water or the ground or the air that moves. So that's the first thing to understand about waves is that they are the movement of energy and not really at least not forwards or backwards, of the movement of the substance itself, just up and down. Uh, now let's talk about the anatomy of a wave, the parts of a wave. If I look at a diagram of a wave, I can see that the shape of the wave goes up to the top and then comes back down to the bottom. And scientists, because they are very bored and they like to name everything, they have named the top of the wave and the bottom of the wave. So they named the top of the wave the crest. And you may have heard of that term when you're talking about the crest of a wave in the water. The crest also applies to sound waves and earthquake waves and any kind of wave that we might see. The top of the wave is called the crest. The bottom of the wave has a name that you're probably less familiar with, which is trough. So the opposite of a crest that down at the bottom is a trough. The middle of a wave 
we sometimes call sea level, especially if we're talking about uh, the uh, water. We'll call that sea level. That's like the resting place where the wave at the, if there wasn't a wave up and down, that's where the level would be. Okay. The distance between two crests or two troughs, but we usually go with crests, but it really doesn't matter because it would be the same. The distance between one wave and the next wave, and you need to have it be the same part of the next wave. So it could be one crest to the next or one trough to the next is the wave length. So when I say wavelength to you, I am talking about from one wave to the next wave at the same point, one crest to the next crest or whatever. Okay. The amplitude of the wave is the height of the wave, but only from sea level. So the, the, from sea level to the crest, or you could go from sea level to the trough because it's going to be the same either way. And then one final concept, which is a little bit more uh, difficult to understand, is frequency. So I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain a rate. Explain a explainify. Explain a rate. I'm going to explain what frequency refers to. Okay. I want you to imagine that you are standing on a dock and you are looking out at whatever, a beautiful sunset on the dock. And there are waves along the dock that are passing by. Well, if I stand in one place and I count the number of waves that pass me by, that is the frequency. Every time a crest passes me, I would count it. So there's one, two, three. Every crest that comes by, I count it. Frequency, how frequent are the waves coming by a fixed point? How frequently are, the, whether it's sound waves or radio waves, how many wave crests are passing by me in a fixed amount of time, let's say per second. Uh, so frequency means how frequently are wave crests passing me by as I stand in a single place. Uh, and we use this in radio because the channel that you listen to, maybe your favorite station is 95.3 or something. In 95.3, FM 95.3, that means that that is the number of radio waves 95.3 uh, refers to the number of radio waves that pass by me as i or by my radio antenna as it sits there and receives those uh those waves so that it can play the station for me so you have uh wave crest wave trough amplitude, wavelength, and frequency. And you understand what waves are. They're the movement of energy rather than the movement of the medium itself. Well, hello. Thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website which is handsome science teacher because I mean look at this face handsome science teacher.com where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos because well, you already have access to those right they're free but also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me where we where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together I have an entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.